triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. This one is part 9. Refitting the repaired connecting rod, modifying the big end brasses so that everything lines up correctly and modifying one of the eccentric straps. Before I start this episode I would just like to say that this is not a rebuild of this engine. What I'm doing is making it go then I can evaluate how much work it's going to need to make it that extra bit special. When I looked at the positions of the bolt holes at the bottom part of the connecting rod, I was a bit concerned that when I put the engine back together, the crosshead would not be in full alignment with the big end. And in this clip, before I go any further, I'm replacing the crosshead pin. These pins are quite a good fit in the connecting rod fork, but a really sloppy fit in the crossheads. I intend to bush the crossheads with phosphor bronze. I'm going to make this part ultra simplistic to avoid people writing in and asking me questions. The two arrows show where the crank pin is, and as you can see, the connecting rod is sitting midway between the two crank webs. This is a good thing, it means I can drill the holes in the middle of the mounting at the bottom of the connecting rod, then rebolt the connecting rod to the big end brasses, and here they are with the holes drilled all over the place. In my opinion, the builder of this triple expansion engine wasn't really up to the job, and I do sympathise because I wouldn't want to build one. And I think by the time he got to this stage, he really had lost the plot. I'm even wondering whether he just threw these big end brasses at the drilling machine, hoping the holes would come out in the right place. But as you can see, they didn't. I think his drill must have wandered a bit on the way through. Anyway, this is fixable. Once I've got this engine to run successfully, the name of the series will change and basically start again, and it will be called Rebuilding a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine, which is distinctly different to the series I'm currently working on called Completing a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine, which by the way is made considerably better than this one. This is my Proxon Mini Multi Tool Drill Stand, and it's very useful. It sits near the main work area and it's great for very light duty jobs, just like this one. Normally this is fitted with a drill chuck, but I changed that for a collet so I could fit a genuine Proxon milling cutter. And here's the cutter in action. I'm using it to correct the position of the hole through the big end brass. Brutal perhaps, but very effective and quite accurate. I think it would be very foolish of me to drill the holes in the new part of the connecting rod that I made to fit this thing. It wouldn't take very long to make a new big end brass, but there's no point because this one will work fine. The time has come to drill the holes in the new part of the bottom end of the connecting rod. And here I'm marking out the positions for the holes using my scriber. And the good news is when I look at the hole positions, they are in the centre of the part. This small Proxon drill vice is quite useful because it has a slot in the middle which is great for holding vertical components. As you can see though, I have the small machine vise clamped into the larger machine vise on my drilling machine. First of all, using a centre drill to get the hole in the right position, I follow it through with a twist drill. Then I simply repeat the process to drill the hole in the other side. Always starting with the centre drill so it doesn't wander about. In no time at all, I ended up with two holes that were accurately drilled. I'm cleaning up the burrs caused by the drilling process using a small needle file. This is all very routine stuff and it's not difficult to do. It's a good idea to always remove burrs from parts because if you don't do that, when you start bolting things together, errors can creep in. And here is the new part fitted to the old parts. It's time now, I think, for a bit of reassembly. This was a very fiddly job. In this clip, you can see that one of the holes in the big end brasses is bigger. And this really doesn't matter at all because the big end brasses can't go anywhere because of the two crank webs either side of them. In this clip, I'm fitting the bottom part, which is a steel plate, which will hold the pair of gunmetal brasses together. Not all engines use this principle, but it's a good idea because gunmetal is a very soft metal and when the bolts are tightened, the pressure of the nuts on the gun metal could cause the gun metal to distort. In this clip, I'm showing how I fitted the nuts on. First of all, tightly with a nut spinner, and then I added a lock nut on each one of them. 
And for this I also use the nut spinner. Don't forget these are only 7BA bolts, they are very small indeed and will shear off quite easily. This next part of the job, reassembling the crosshead pin, drove me mad. By as I might, by using hand tools I could not get the nut to engage on the thread of the pin. And thanks to either evolution or some supreme being, the design of my fingers is far better than hand tools. I held the nut at the left hand side in the pair of pliers and rotated the pin with my finger and in no time at all it engaged. Then I used a spanner at the left hand side and a pair of pliers at the right hand side. I wouldn't normally do the job like this but the pin was already marked so it seemed a waste of time cutting and using a piece of brass strip to stop me marking it. The finish on most of the parts on this engine are not particularly good but if I do decide to rebuild this engine, which I probably will, I will refinish the parts as I go. Some parts of the construction of this engine are a little bit strange. This for instance, there are two grub screws holding the eccentric sheave onto the crankshaft. One of the grub screw holes is in the middle and the other one is not at all in the middle. So I removed the second grub screw and put it in my box of 4BA grub screws. The grub screw that I left in place was the one that goes through the highest point of the eccentric lobe. Time now for a bit of heat. Even when I'd removed one grub screw and slackened off the other one, the eccentric sheave would not rotate on the crankshaft, which means it's possibly been held in place with Loctite or some similar retainer. After heating up the area to destroy the bond of the retainer, I temporarily fitted a bolt and now the eccentric sheave moves freely on the crankshaft. This is the underside eccentric strap and as you can see once again it's not very well finished but I'm not concerned with that. I've marked a black spot on it using a felt tip pen and I'm going to drill a hole in the eccentric strap at this point. This is not good engineering practice but I do it a lot. If the black mark that I make on the eccentric strap looks like it's in the right place, once I drill a hole on the mark, theoretically that should be in the right place and as you can see it's quite close. The main thing is the hole in the eccentric strap perfectly matches the grub screw hole in the eccentric sheave. So I can put my allen key in there and adjust the eccentric sheave. When I get it to where I need it to be, I can then tighten the grub screw to hold it in place. Now that everything is free and adjustable regarding the eccentrics, I can set the valve timing, which I'll probably do in the next episode. And also, of course, the connecting rod is not broken anymore. So with a bit of luck in the next episode, you should be able to see the engine running. Stay healthy in 2022. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.